that's Ross and in today's video I'm showing you guys my mulberry tree this one's called Illinois Everbearing and it looks like uh, a mess right now this is a technique I use called pollarding or coppicing um, really to take the height down off of this tree um, I don't have a measuring tape but this thing is about seven feet tall I would say at, a, at its current state huge trunk it's only been in the ground for three years very vigorous um, tree it's probably four inches in diameter um, and then the shoots that it put out this year were growing at a rate of about a foot a week in certain parts of the, of the uh, spring and summer and if I were to measure out some of these shoots guys I mean all the way up to here going back I mean I think some of them were about 10 feet long um, for sure so the tree is really tall at least I, I'm guessing probably at its highest point was 20 feet tall this year and this is a really tough tree to uh, control it's one of the most vigorous fruit trees there is it is insane um, especially here in a temperate climate that you can grow something that grows this quickly and fruits is kind of nuts and if you'll notice I have the tree next to the house which is a huge mistake um, I could I guess at this point dig this tree up take it out um, cut it back to the stump and kind of kill the stump you know there's many options at this point but I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm either going to let it be how it is where we pollarded this um, or I'm going to cut it back even further to like about this height all the way around and we'll just do a nice little chopping at a certain height and then that way I can use these these trunks here and we will graft a new variety onto this Illinois Everbearing called Girardi and Girardi is a true dwarf mulberry it really is and the reason for that is because it fruits so heavily that the fruit quantity actually stops it from growing um, so if I can get that dwarf variety onto this very vigorous rootstock uh, the tree will really um, top out at about 10 feet because we've already got some height underneath um, if you were to graft Girardi onto a Morris Alba um, seedling the tree would really only get to about six by six which is a really nice height um, for somebody who lives in a ornamental setting or someone in a, in a home garden setting even if you were to grow this as a commercial crop which I'm not really recommending that you do but you could plant a whole row of these Girardi mulberries and they would fruit for you very heavily in those in those spaces and you wouldn't have to control the trees nearly as much the problem is going to be for me is controlling this lower growth uh, because the Illinois Everbearing tree is so vigorous that any shoot that it puts out below the grafts could very easily overtake the grafts and surpass it in growth and then take control of the tree again um, so I had to keep a careful eye on this tree for a few years I would say um, until there is a point in which the Girardi has pretty much maintained control and this Illinois Everbearing um, doesn't feel the need to sh send out all these crazy shoots now I don't know how successful I'm going to be at that um, it may just forever send out shoots from lower lower down which could be a very huge problem and in that case I'd be better off just pollarding this every other year and keeping this tree maintained that way um, so there's a lot of options here and it'd be nice to have more than one mulberry tree because when you pollard it and you take off all this growth guys um, you know when you when you cut it down to just the stumps and you, you got to do this every year this isn't something you can't you can just forget about every once in a while you got to keep doing this year after year um, you lose fruit this way this is one disadvantage to this uh, the mulberry the way it fruits is that all the new growth it put out this is all really the new growth 
all this stuff here that I took out. That new growth puts out new growth, and on that new growth forms mulberries. So uh, by me taking out a lot of the new growth, except for a couple buds here, you can see when I've pollarded this, I left a couple of uh, buds from last year. The growth that comes out of here will fruit, but the amount of fruit load will be nothing compared to what I would have gotten if I had just left this tree at 20 feet tall and uh, <laughs> and just let it keep getting massive, you know. Um, but that's not really realistic either because of the birds. I'm not getting anything off of this tree. I only got fruit off of it the first year because it was able to be netted. Um, after that, the tree grew just so vigorously that uh, I, I really haven't been able to get much berries off of this. So it would be nice to have a smaller dwarfed variety. Um, you know, maybe I'll pollard this every year and then next to it I'll plant myself a Girardi that I'll graft myself onto, you know, some kind of rootstock that's hardy to this area. And then that way that tree will only get six by six and then every year I'll just chop this back and get, you know, minimal much more minimal fruit compared to the Girardi, but you know, at least they'll have two different mulberries um, that can produce for me in one year, and things will just be more reliable that way. But anyway, guys, that is the video. I just wanted to show you what this tree now looks like, pollarded, the strategy for next year. Um, you know, I really recommend you guys grow yourself some mulberries at home, especially if you have room. Uh, That's a really nice thing for the birds. They love mulberries. Um, you can even plant a mulberry in the corner of your yard and just say, grow. And then, you know, the birds will stay over there and eat that for a good portion of the season and leave the rest of your stuff alone. So, uh, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. I got a lot of wood to chop up here. Uh, we're going to be selling some of this stuff. And the rest of it will be put underneath the tree as mulch, just like I've done with the rest of my trees here, my persimmon. Layers and layers of mulch, guys. That's how you feed your trees, get them to become larger trees, more healthy trees. The amount of nutrients in this growth here that's between, you know, below two inches in diameter is the most nutrient dense wood you can find. So, trees eat trees. All right, guys, take care.